Want to learn how to upload your gaming videos properly so you can get more views and subscribers? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step the exact process I would use to upload and post my gaming videos. Also, I'm going to reveal how to fix one of the biggest mistakes gaming YouTubers make when they post their videos, and this mistake stops them from getting any views or exposure. So, my name is Marcus Jones. Let's get stuck into this video. So, on YouTube, you're going to come to this little camera icon, click on it, and select upload a video. And once it loads up, what you're going to do is drag and drop your video. I'm just going to drag and drop this dummy video that you want to upload onto this page. Simples. When we do that, we're going to be sent to an upload page that looks like this, where our video will start uploading. And you can track its progress via the progress bar down below. So once our video has been uploaded and processed, we'll be able to customize all the data and make our video look the way we want it. So we're gonna optimize it fully so it has the best chance of getting as many views as possible. But before we do anything, we need to actually think about some strategy because the way you proceed from here actually depends significantly on the style of video you're uploading. Now I'm oversimplifying a little bit here, but broadly speaking, there are two main ways your video will get views. Firstly, your video will get views through the YouTube algorithm recommending it. Videos that get the majority of their views through the YouTube algorithm recommending them don't necessarily need to worry that much about keywords and SEO. Rather, they need to focus on just getting as many people to click. For example, this is the most popular gaming video on Mr. Beast Gaming. Now, before Mr. Beast created this video, obviously no one was typing, whatever you build, I'll pay for, into the YouTube search bar. Also, when you look at this video, right off the bat, you'll notice that there are no keywords like Minecraft or challenge in the video title. But while the video title and thumbnail combo and description, if you investigate it are terrible from an SEO perspective, the video itself is very enticing to click on from a human perspective. So in other words, this is the type of video that's probably not going to be getting the majority of its views from YouTube search. And so keywords actually aren't that important for it. Rather, optimizing for humans is, and you can see that this video has done that and has done very well with 82 million views. Because the YouTube algorithm is pretty smart. Even if you don't have the word Minecraft in your metadata, it's still going to be able to figure out that you've got a Minecraft video. And it's also probably going to do a pretty good job at figuring out what type of a Minecraft video yours is. And so if you can just optimize your video for people and get a high percentage of people to click on and watch your video, that's gonna send positive signals to the YouTube algorithm. It's gonna promote it to more people and the cycle will continue. On the other hand, there's a second type of video that gets the majority of its views through search. Often these types of videos are catered towards viewers who know exactly what type of video they want to watch. And they are specifically searching for it on YouTube rather than just letting the YouTube algorithm serve them any old video on their homepage. A great example of this is how to tutorial style videos. And to give you an even more concrete example, the video you're watching right now, while it's not exactly a gaming video, is a perfect example. I'm willing to bet that most of you guys, because of the style of this video, found this video through YouTube search because you were searching, trying to learn how to properly upload and post your video. And for the small percentage of you who did find this video through your homepage, I, I just feel sorry for you. You must have an incredibly boring YouTube homepage. Anyway, even though these two styles, recommended videos and searchable videos are distinct. It can be possible to have both, but usually you have to pick a side. So the first step before you optimize any metadata is you want to take a look at your video and think realistically about its style and what is the most likely way people are going to discover it. Ask yourself and maybe even do the research if you have those skills. Are people going to be searching for this video on YouTube or is this the kind of video that people don't know they want to watch until they actually see it recommended to them? Having good answers to these questions will help you optimize your video as we move through the following process. Now for this particular tutorial, let's pretend we've done some brainstorming and some research and we expect to get the majority of our views from YouTube search. And so we're gonna pay a decent amount of our attention to keywords. So the first step in optimizing our video is to work on our title. We need to title our video in a way that viewers actually read it and know what our video is about. But because this is a searchable video, titles are also really important for SEO. And including keywords in our title will help our video rank higher in search for the search terms we're trying to rank for. So if there's a particular keyword phrase that you expect the majority of people are gonna be typing into YouTube when they're looking for your video, you wanna include that in your title. Moving on, our description. Now the description is actually really, really important because it's not just for describing your videos, although it is quite helpful in that respect, but your description does a similar thing to your title. YouTube actually scrapes your description for keywords, just like the title. So when you're describing your video here, if you're trying to show up in YouTube search, you wanna try and include the keyword phrase that you're actually trying to show up and rank for. 
Now you can't just stuff keywords into your description because it's against YouTube's terms and conditions, but you can try and naturally integrate it within your description. The description is also the place where you can add those little blue hashtags that you might've seen show up under the titles of certain videos. To add one, you just simply type the hashtag symbol followed by the word that you wanna be your hashtag. And when you publish the video, that hashtag will show up underneath your video title. Finally, the description is also a place where you can add chapters, which you may have seen other creators use to break up and segment their videos kind of like this. To add chapters, what you wanna do is type timestamps in your video followed by the corresponding title of each chapter. And when you publish your video, YouTube will take the play bar and segment it out into the chapters that you've selected. Now let's go a bit down further to our thumbnail. So here we can add a custom thumbnail. We just click on this button, it'll open up a box and we can select an image like this. So now you can see that I have my dummy custom thumbnail added and this thumbnail is gonna be the main thing that's going to show up on YouTube when people see my video listed there. If we go down a little bit further, we also have playlists. If you've created playlists for your channel, you can click on this button, a list of your playlists will show up and you can add your video to the most relevant playlist for you. So, however, in this particular example, this channel doesn't have any playlists. So when I click on this, the list is gonna show up blank. The next important thing we have to look at is copper. It's important that you select the correct option here because it's gonna significantly impact how people view your video on YouTube. For example, if you mark your video as made for kids, you'll be unable to monetize your video, your video will have no comment section, and all those other interactive features will be turned off too. Now, some creators struggle to designate their video, but an important distinction to note here is when marking your video is just because kids watch your video doesn't mean your video is made for kids. For example, many kids watch Marvel movies, but it doesn't mean Marvel movies are made specifically for kids. If you're still having trouble deciding how to designate your video here, I'd recommend you ask yourself these two questions. First of all, would your video look out of place alongside classic TV shows? Like, would it fit right in with TV shows like Thomas the Tank Engine, Sesame Street, and Peppa Pig, my personal favorite? If it would fit in with that style of content, then it's probably made for kids. If not, then you can move on to the next question, which is, would an adult be interested in watching this video? Would an adult voluntarily seek out and enjoy this style of video? If the answer to this question is no, then you're usually pretty safe to mark your video as not made for kids. Now let's come down to more options. Here we've got paid promotion. So you should check this box if you're creating sponsored content, which basically means that someone has paid you either to create this specific video and promote a product in it, or even just to place a product within your video to subtly promote it to your viewers. I like money. Coming down a bit further is this little checkbox where you can add automatic chapters. Normally I would leave this off for my video because I would rather not place my bets on YouTube's AI trying to decide how to segment my video out. And of course, if you've manually added chapters to your video, you should leave this off. Next, our tags. So earlier we mentioned about ranking for search and keywords and the tag section is specifically designed for us to add in our keywords and keyword phrases. Now what's different about tags and our title and description though is that tags are not going to be visible to your viewers unless viewers have special plugins. They're purely for us as the creator to communicate to YouTube and confirm that yes, our video is, in this case, about gaming, funny, and moments. So I might just type gaming, hit enter. It's gonna add this tag for me. Then I'm gonna go funny, hit enter, moments, enter, and bang, we've got those three tags. But what's cool is that you can also add keyword phrases. So if I type gaming, funny, moments, and hit enter, you'll see that it adds a full keyword phrase. Now, unfortunately, tags don't actually make that much difference to your videos anymore. At least they make far less difference than titles and descriptions, but there's no harm in adding them anyway. Next, we can delve into some more advanced features. Now, most of these aren't actually necessary, but if you want more control over your video, they can be helpful. So first of all, language. Pretty obvious, select your language. Here, you can just hit none. It doesn't really matter that much, unless of course your video is really applicable to one of these categories. Next, if you wanna come down and specify when your video was recorded, you can select a recording date and you can also select a recording location. So I'm just gonna continue down here and next we have licensing. So the standard YouTube license is the one I recommend you use. The other one is a Creative Commons license. So basically in Creative Commons, you say that nothing in your video is copyrighted, that you own everything and that you'll be happy for other people to reuse your content within their videos as long as they attribute or credit you. That's what you'll be allowing people to do if you use the Creative Commons attribution. Well, this is often referred to Creative Commons 3. Next, you can choose to allow embedding. And when you check this, it's gonna allow people to embed your video on websites. So if you've ever been to a website and you've seen they've got a video on that website, and you've clicked on it and you've noticed that the player looks 
awfully familiar, like it was completely ripped off from YouTube. It's probably because it was ripped off from YouTube because it was an embedded YouTube video. And I'd recommend that you allow this because if someone's going to embed your video on their site, then it's basically free marketing for you. Here we have the publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers option. You always want to leave this one on because basically it means that when your video goes live, if there are anyone subscribed to your channel who have notifications on, they're going to be notified and it will show up in their subscriptions feeds. Also, there's this section called short sampling. Basically, this is going to be an option that will allow people to take apart your video and make a YouTube short from it. Now, if you don't want that, then you can turn it off. But again, I'd leave it on because it's basically free marketing for you if people do decide to do that. Next is your category. So you can select a range of different categories, but what you want to do as a gaming YouTuber is select gaming. And when you do this, you're going to have this cool little checkbox show up and you can enter the title of the game you're playing in it. So for example, let's say Star Wars Battlefront. And when I do this, you know, I can see a list of all of these different Star Wars games and I can actually select the Star Wars game I was playing just again to confirm to YouTube, hey, this is what this video is about. Now, this drop down box here gives us a bit more control over our comments. So obviously when I click on it, this option is gonna allow people to comment on your video. You can also allow people to comment in your video, but hold potentially inappropriate comments for review, which basically means that if YouTube senses things like profanity or sexually inclined language in comments left on your videos, it's gonna automatically flag them and then you're going to be able to go to the YouTube studio later and review automatically flagged comments and manually approve or disapprove them. You can also choose to hold all comments for review regardless of whether the comment is completely family friendly or whether YouTube thinks it has profound language or sexual content in it. And again, you will then be able to go to your studio dashboard, comments, and then approve or deny whatever comments you wish. Now, the final option you might wanna look at is whether or not you wanna show how many viewers like or dislike your video. So YouTube is moving away from showing how many people dislike your video as a default, but you might also have known that there are some videos out there, especially videos from brand, <laughs> YouTube Rewinds, that get a lot of dislikes. And so the creators of those videos often will uncheck this, which means people won't be able to see how many likes your video has actually gotten. It'll just show like and dislike kind of like this. So once you've set all the settings here, you can come down to this next button and hit next to go to the next page. Now in this next step, you can choose to add subtitles. I almost never do this, but if you wanna do it, go for it. You can also choose to add an end screen, which are those clickable tiles that show up at the end of a video and you can click on them to go to other videos, to go to websites or to subscribe to that creator's channel. So for example, if you click here, hit the add button, you'll be able to add a subscribe button or a video or multiple videos if you want to. So once you select your end screens, you can click and drag them around into a custom position if you like. You can hit save on that guy and move on to the cards section. This is where you can add those little annotation things that pop up on the top right hand side of videos that viewers can click on during your videos. Now in this case, I'm actually not gonna add any cards because to be honest, often you don't really want to add cards to videos because you wanna try and get people to watch your video in its entirety without clicking off. So once you've done that, you can come down and hit next to go to the next page. You now have checks. This is where YouTube will ding you if there are any copyright issues or content ID claims in your video. And here you can see on this particular dummy video, YouTube has picked up that I'm using a copyrighted song in my video and it's hit me with a little claim. If I click on see details here, it's going to tell me, hey, we've noticed that you're using this Protectors of Earth song during this little portion of your video. Now getting a content ID strike like this isn't the end of the world. It sounds intimidating, but I can leave this video with this song in it just like it is and publish it and in the majority of circumstances all YouTube is going to do is play ads on that video and forward any revenue generated by that video to the person who actually owns the copyrights to that song. So don't worry it's not like a copyright strike and it's going to significantly affect your channel or anything like that. However if you do own the rights to use that song in your video and YouTube is making a mistake you can go to select action and dispute the claim. Now if you click here you'll also see these other options and here's a pro tip don't use them. They don't work very well at the moment. And while automatically replacing the copyrighted music with a song from YouTube's music library might sound like a good idea in theory, it normally works about as well as a waterproof tea bag. It messes up your entire video and it just makes it sound gross. So I'm not gonna worry about doing any of this stuff. I'm just gonna leave the video as is with the content ID strike. So I'm just gonna go done and I'm gonna come down here and hit the next button. By the way, if this video has been helpful so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like on it so it can spread to more people. Go do that now. Cheers. All right, so now we're at the stage where you can choose how you actually want your video to go live on YouTube. And I would pretty much always recommend that you go to schedule and schedule your video to go live at an appropriate time. And it's best to do this because firstly, if you can choose when 
when you want your video to go live, you can set it to go live at a specific time that you think the majority of your viewers will be most likely to be online. And secondly, if you schedule your video to go live at least a few hours into the future after you've uploaded it, this will give YouTube extra time to process your video in the back end. So basically when you post it to viewers, it's gonna look higher quality. Now you might notice there's also a premiere option, which sounds all fancy smancy, but basically if you check this box, your video is going to go live on your channel, but people won't actually be able to watch it until the time you set. If people do click on it, they're just gonna see a countdown timer that's gonna show them when the video is actually going to go live. Also, when the video does go live for the first time, the premiere feature will mean that people will be able to see and interact with a little live stream chat as they all watch the video live together for the first time. Now that all sounds really exciting, doesn't it? But the premiere feature is kind of overused right now, so it sounds special, but unless you're like a larger creator or you're posting a very special video that people have been waiting for and you're trying to throw fuel on the hype fire, I'd probably recommend just scheduling your videos as regular videos. That way, if you do have a particular special video that you wanna put out down the track, you can use a premiere feature and by then hopefully you've accumulated an audience and by premiering it, it's gonna stand out from the rest of your videos and make more of an impact. So from here, you can just click schedule, the video will go live at the time you've selected and you are good to go. But I wanna address something real quick. See, here's a secret. Uploading and posting your video properly is important, don't get me wrong, but it's only one small piece in the YouTube success puzzle. Because you can be the most knowledgeable YouTube expert in the world, and you can optimize your metadata and upload your video perfectly, and that's still not gonna guarantee your success if you're not doing all of these other things I share in this video. So if you'd like to build on what you've learned and get a proven holistic approach that I've used to literally get millions of views on my gaming videos, click the video on screen right now before it disappears, and I'll catch you there.